Good morning. Recap on carnivore day four, Saturday morning edition. I just wanted to film this real quick before my husband and son get home. They are duck hunting right now and I am enjoying having the house to myself. And so yesterday we ate out. So let me just give a quick recap. Started with my bulletproof coffee, just like I'm having right now. I'm really just like every night, I look forward to these in the next morning. They're so good. And you know, if you're just watching this video, go back to the first one, you'll see why I'm doing the carnivore diet. I'm really trying to heal my gut. I think I have some kind of bacterial overgrowth and I'm trying to fix that. So I just feel like carnivore is the best way to do it. So bacterial overgrowth in my gut, I mean, hi Remy. Remy's making an appearance, this is my dog, one of my dogs. And so yesterday I started out with Bulletproof coffee. One of the reasons I wanted to switch to Bulletproof coffee versus like my regular latte is even though I think on the carnivore diet, doing some dairy is okay, like low lactose dairy they say is okay. I was noticing that even when I was drinking coffee, I was just like burping it up. So I felt like switching to Bulletproof would be better. And also because Bulletproof coffee has, it has coconut oil in it, which has caprylic acid in it, which is a natural like antibacterial. So I felt like that would be good for my gut because I am trying to kill off like the vermin I saw in my blood work. Um, if you go back to video one, you'll see there's literally like little bugs floating around in my, in my, uh, when you can see on my blood work, which is a sign that I have a bacterial overgrowth. So anyway, so started off with bulletproof coffee. This stuff fuels me, like, I mean, it really gives me so much energy. I don't know if it's because you're just giving your body fat, but like, since I've been doing it, I haven't really been hungry for breakfast. I just go straight into an early lunch. So yesterday I did leftover salmon cakes that I had made the day before. If you watch my previous video, I give the recipe for that. And then we went out to dinner and I fell off the bandwagon a little bit. I fell off the wagon, I mean, and I had a glass of wine with dinner and I actually hugely regret that. And I'll get back to that in a second. And I also had a pork chop and some of a crab cake. So, you know, I was really trying to focus on just meat and fats. And, you know, normally when I would go out to eat, I would eat more just like keto, low carb, where I would have like a protein and a salad or a protein and a vegetable. And so uh, no salad for me last night. Instead, we split a crab cake as a family and then I had a pork chop. So this was a far, this is a farm to table restaurant. So normally I'm not a big fan of pork because I think it's inflammatory. And also for those of you that didn't know, it's legal in 25 states to feed pork garbage. You can look up, I think it's called the Swine Protection Act, which basically just means they have to heat the garbage to a certain degree before they feed it to the pigs. So unless I know where the pork, com pork comes from, I usually don't eat a lot of pork just because I think that's gross. But also you never know what they're feeding or injecting into these pigs, like mRNA and all the things. So, but the beauty of this is that we went there, it's this really cute farm to table restaurant near our house. You can see the pigs there. You can go see the baby pigs. And so I trust their meat. And it was delicious and um and then my husband got pork belly and i ate some of his and i think i over ate last night and i but i had a big glass of wine because they have a heavy pour there and i was just i don't know this week fridays i'm always like mentally exhausted working two jobs even starting the series even though no one's probably even watching it but i committed to finishing it but it's just been a lot of extra work. And so, I don't know, by the end of the day, my brain is so fried. I kind of feel like I want something. And I know the Bible says, cast your cares on Jesus and also do not be anxious. So I'm, I'm talking to myself here, but I don't know, by the end of the day, I'm anxious. I always feel like I want something. So I'm trying to be better about that. But I had a glass of rosé. And even though I took Gymnema, which is a supplement that helps you not to get a hangover because it eats the sugar from the wine. And Gymnema, if you've watched me on Instagram, I always share that I think it's like, it is a powerful herb, it's awesome. And, but I took Gymnema, but I still slept like shit last night and I know it's because of the wine. And I wanna just talk about 
what Dave Asprey said about wine when he wrote The Bulletproof Diet back in 2014. If you haven't read this book, it's really great. And all, all the stuff he wrote about holds true today, 10 years later. I really do think this is an, yes, Remy, I see you. I have a very needy dog right here. This is just something to think about. So I'll just cut to the chase. So basically he says a lot of the, the wine industry has done a good job saying wine's good for you and that you get reserve trawl, but there's no way you would ever get that much reserve trawl, like unless you drink billions of glasses of wine, right? So, but here's what I want to share. Meanwhile, wine is full of unfiltered yeast, which triggers yeast growth and brain fog and histamine, which will give you headaches, brain fog, and a spare tire. We know that's true. One of the biggest problems with red wine in particular is the presence of mold toxin, okra toxin A. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Especially in American wine, which is not subject to the strict European standards of two parts per billion. Red wine has higher levels than white because of because mold forms on the outside of the fruit and more skin contact time is required to extract the pigments and tannins in red wine compared to white. It's up to you to decide whether the pleasures of wine are worth the documented toxins and your resulting decline in performance. So that's just reiterating to me. I am talking to myself here. Like wine is not our friend and especially wines from America. If you've ever done any research on glyphosate and all the crap they spray on everything, like we basically have no rules against it and the EPA has is basically in bed with Monsanto or Bayer. They're now Bayer. They're they're the ones Bayer is the one writing the legislation against itself which which lets it do whatever it wants. I mean it is like it's bad. But that means when you're drinking especially American wine, you're also getting all those pesticides and um, all the added sulfites and just all that grossness. So at least I had a French rosé last night. So when you do drink wine, don't drink wine from America. But me trying to kill bacteria in my, in my gut, I should know better not to drink wine, but I had a glass of wine. So it is what it is. And I slept like shit and that's on me. And lesson learned, and now I'm gonna be tired all day because I didn't sleep well. So lesson learned, cut out the wine. It's just hard though, because when you go out to dinner, you're not like, oh, I can't wait for a, I don't know, a water that's so exciting or give me a vodka with soda and a squeeze of lemon. It's just like not the same, but wine has a lot of sugar in it, right? And that's what I'm trying to cut out. So with that, I'm gonna sign off and let's just um, hope I have learned my lesson with that, right? And a lesson learned, but it, it wasn't as hard to eat out as I thought, other than me wanting to drink wine. So there's that. So anyway, y'all have a great day. If you are enjoying this series, all five of you that might be watching, please don't forget to subscribe to get my next video. And we're gonna see this through. I'm documenting seven days on carnivore to see how I feel. Have a great day, everybody.